So now you've seen how manipulating distance using simple machines helps to make work easier to perform. So let's go see what we can find in the garage. Come on. Look, I've already got some levers laid out for you that we're going to look at. All right, I'm going to start with the first class lever. All right, so we've got two forces and the fulcrum that we have to look at for each lever. Fulcrum is going to be where it pivots, okay, that pivot point. Your effort force, which is where I'm going to be putting uh, the effort into it, and the resistance force which we're going to be looking at the distance here to uh, where, like, maybe the nail or whatever you're trying to uh, pry out. Okay. So, let's go ahead and measure what this is going to be. So, I'm going to say my fulcrum is going to be right here, where it's going to pivot. And I think I would have my hand about right here. So the distance is going to be 26 inches. Right. And then in that case, I would go ahead and make a mark there if I was going to be able to measure that force as well. But we're going to do the actual force on another example. Okay. So that's going to be where my effort is. The distance effort, or in, because that's what I'm putting in, is going to be 26 inches. All right, we also need the distance resistance. All right, so the resistance is going to be right here, assuming I'm going to be using a nail. Okay, so wherever the resistance is, the center point of that. And here is my fulcrum again, right in the middle. So I'm going to measure that distance. And it is three inches. I'm not using a precision scale. So for this particular example, I'm rounding it to just the whole numbers. When I use something more of a precision, I can uh, actually go out to more decimal points. In this example, I only have distances. So I'm going to find the ideal mechanical advantage. I'm going to use this equation right here. So that means then that I am A equals the distance of my effort divided by the distance of my resistance. So I'm going to fill those in with my values. So that means that 26 inches is my distance of my effort and then the distance of my resistance was 3 inches. I plug that into my calculator I'm going to get something like 8.666 and keeps repeating on. Um, but if I'm going to look at the number of correct significant figures, I notice that my 3 here, it only has one significant figure, and then 26 has two significant figures. So my answer can only have one significant figure. So that means that my IMA for this nail bar is 9. Notice I don't have any units on this because my inches are going to cancel out. So now we're going to do an example using a smaller nail bar. Okay. So first though, before I can find the actual mechanical advantage, I want to find the ideal mechanical advantage and see what that ideal mechanical advantage would be. And then I'm going to use a scale and some weights here to find that actual mechanical advantage. Okay, so I made a little mark where the fulcrum is going to be. And again, this is a first class lever. So on each side of the fulcrum, I have on this side my effort. And on this side, the opposite side, I have my resistance. Okay, so let's go ahead and measure the effort first. I'm going to line that up about midpoint and bring this down. And right about here is where that scale is going to be. I'm going to put it into uh, this hole here. 
So this would be 5 and 1, 2, 3, 3 sixteenths. Okay, so now I've turned it over so that I can find the resistance distance better. So again, I'm going to line it up about midway and bring it down. And this one is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 16. Because right, these are measured in 30 seconds. That's why they are the, have the smaller lines here. Alright, I found this one the same way I found the last example. IMA equals distance effort over distance resistance. My effort is 5 and 3 sixteenths of an inch. My resistance is 13 sixteenths of an inch. Um, whenever I solve this, I end up with 6.385 as my um, IMA. All right, so let's play a little bit now. I changed the setup some. If this is my fulcrum here, these are my weights again, and I pull, right, the distance to my effort is much longer than the distance to my resistance, and it's showing 0.1. What happens if I move it back, and now the distance from my fulcrum to my resistance, and the distance from my fulcrum to my uh, to my effort, right, is a little bit shorter? What happens? So now, let's pull that again, and it is 2.4 pounds. So notice, just by moving it that distance, it went up almost twice as much. And the wheelbarrow is a great example of a second class lever. Okay, so let's go ahead and find the ideal mechanical advantage for it. All right, to find the ideal mechanical advantage for the second class lever, I've got to figure out where the fulcrum is going to be. Then I'm going to find the distance of my resistance, which for this particular thing, I don't have a resistance in my wheelbarrow at this point because I'm just looking for ideal mechanical advantage, so it's not going to matter when we're looking at the distances to each. But if I had a resistance in my wheelbarrow, it would be approximately right here. So I'm going to measure to get to that uh, distance of my resistance from here to the fulcrum. The fulcrum is going to be right here at the axle. Right? That's where my pivot point would be. So you can see that it's going to be approximately eight and three fourths of an inch. Then I need the distance of my effort. Okay, so the distance of my effort is going to be back here where my hands are going to go. And let's say my hand is going to be approximately right here. So I need to get the center point of where my hand is going to be, which would be here. Going back to the fulcrum. To where my hand is going to be is approximately 47 inches. For the example of the wheelbarrow, I'm going to find IMA again distance effort over distance resistance, so that's 47 inches over 8.75 inches, which is going to give you 5.4 with the correct number of significant figures. Now I don't have any examples of the actual mechanical advantage because I didn't have a good scale there in the garage, um, so I don't actually have any um, examples of that. But you're going to find it kind of in the same way. You're going to find your force resistance by weighing the item that you're actually moving. And then you're going to be able to find your effort by using that scale. Kind of like the example where I was showing um, with the fish scale, showing the little weights and how it was moving it. But that one was not a very accurate scale. So because of that, I don't have any actual world um, AMAs. 
but you'll be able to do that in the lab. All right, let's go fishing. The fishing rod is a great example of a third class lever. The third class lever, kind of like the second class lever, has the fulcrum at the end with the effort force and the resistance force on the same side of the fulcrum. Right. So our effort force would be right here because that's where my hand is going to be when I'm holding the fishing rod. And my resistance force is going to be at the end. Okay, so let's go down here. Down here is where we're going to be reeling in the big one, right? Our big fish is down here. And that is what is going to be causing our resistance on our pole. So let's find that distance first. So the distance of my resistance is going to be from the resistance itself all the way down here to the fulcrum, the fulcrum being the end of the rod. And so if I look at that, it is going to be 77 and, let's see, that'd be 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 sixteenths. Right, so 77 and 11 sixteenths. All right, then my effort is going to be where my hand is. I have my hand right here. The center point of my hand is approximately right here. And I'm going to use a smaller ruler for that. Get that in there right. And about center point to the end. And that is three and one fourth of an inch. Okay, now for this example, I did the problem the same way as the others, giving me a 0 0.0418 mechanical advantage. Notice that this mechanical advantage is less than one. So, yes, whenever I put the effort in, I am having to use a greater force than the actual force of the resistance, in this case the fish. If you ever notice whenever you're lifting up the fish with your uh, fishing pole, the fish feels like it's so much heavier than whenever you actually get it out of the water. Of course you've got water resistance in there as well. But uh, you get a trade-off there. The speed at which that you're pulling it out of the water and also the, uh, the distance. So whenever you barely move your wrist, the distance that the end of the pole is moving is greater. So there is a trade-off, and that's why those third-class levers are used, even though it doesn't give you a mechanical advantage of higher than one. All right, so I hope this video helped, and that you're now ready to start working with the Simple Machines investigation, and also the working those levers practice problems.